Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use any iClone character along with their motions in your very own simple game using Unity 3D. The first thing you'll want to do is get the Character Animation Sample Project, which is what I'll be using in this example. Okay, for this example I'm going to be using Matilda from our Chuck and the Neighbors pack. Here she is in iClone demonstrating a motion. I'll just go over to Edit in 3D Exchange in the Modify panel to the right to move on to the Export step. When she's in 3D Exchange, I can double click on any motion in the Motion Library to the right to preview it. Okay, now I'll want to export Matilda's geometry and motion separately for use in Unity. First, I'll solely export the geometry here to FBX format. When that's done, I then want to export the animation data, ensuring that I select the One Take Per File option. This will export each motion as a separate FBX file. Okay, now in Unity, I've opened the character animation demo to give you a brief example of what we're going to be doing with Matilda. As you can see, when I enter play mode, I can move around the sample character here, and it has an embedded walking motion along with a couple of others. I can adjust any of the values in the inspector panel to make him walk faster or jump higher. Next, I'm going to import in my Matilda character into this character folder that I've created. When the import is finished, I'll just drag Matilda into my scene. She's a little small initially, so I can scale her up if I want to make her bigger by adjusting the scale values in the inspector panel. Next, I want to make a slight adjustment to the body values to change the character skinned mesh renderer from auto to four bones. All right, next I'm going to create another folder to import my animations into. I'll just drag in all the FBX files from my Explorer into that folder first. Now you'll notice that when I import each of these files, it contains both character structure data along with the actual animation task file. What I want to do to clean things up is simply to duplicate the animation task files one by one and then delete the containing folder. Once that's done, I want to drag all of the animation files over to my character's inspector view to update her animation list. You'll see that when I enter play mode after these are imported, that she'll automatically enter the idle animation. She won't be able to move around yet though, so what I'll need to do first is apply a character controller by going up to Component, then Physics, then Character Controller. Once it's applied to your character, you'll want to resize and reposition it to fit your character's dimensions. Make sure that the bottom of the character controller outline doesn't intersect with the ground plane as well, as this will cause some movement issues. Once that's done, you'll need to open up the Goober character in the project view and then drag over the Super Mario controller and animation scripts to Matilda's inspector view in order to provide her with the ability to move around the screen and animate by command. Next, you'll want to double click on the animation script in order to change the naming of the animations to your own custom ones for Matilda. Here I'm just changing mine to the names of my animations in the project view. 
Once that's done, just save your script. Next, you'll want to deactivate the default project character Goober. Just go to the top of the inspector view and deselect the checkbox to do this like so. After that, you can enter play mode and test out the walk and run motions. You can adjust any of the parameters to better match your character in the inspector, such as walking speed. Just remember that adjustments made in play mode will not be permanent. Reillusion has also provided a custom movement script for Unity that you can easily use with your characters as well. Here I'm just creating a folder called Reillusion Script, and I'm going to import my script there. This object will be called the Reillusion WASD controller. What I want to do to replace the other scripts is just delete them and keep the Reillusion WASD controller once it has been dragged over to the inspector. Once it has been dragged over, you'll see a number of different slots appear that have been assigned to specific keys. The Reillusion WASD controller makes assigning these very simple. All you need to do is drag your animation files over to whichever key you would like to be assigned to that animation. Make sure that the idle, walk, run, and jump animations have those particular type of motions assigned. Also, make sure that any movement motions such as walk and run are stationary in one spot and don't contain any transform data. Otherwise, your character will continually jerk back and forth once the animation loops. Once all of those have been assigned, go ahead and enter play mode to fool around. The Reillusion WASD controller is pretty intuitive and contains a lot of slots for additional motions. If you want to create a camera to follow your character from whatever angle, all you need to do is go up to Game Object, then Create Other, and then Camera. After that, simply drag the camera to your character in the hierarchy view, and reposition it to your desired angle. Once you've done that, you can begin dragging additional animations over to your character in the inspector. Which animations you drag into which slot is totally up to you. You can see here that I'm using different commands to play each motion now, such as left click to play the agree motion. Pressing the 1 key will play the disagree motion, and if I press the 0 key, that will play the annoyed motion. There are various others that can be assigned as well, so go wild with as many animations as you'd like. If you want to add more motions to your character's repertoire, it's as easy as double-clicking on the Reillusion WASD controller script and adding new variables in. As you can see at the beginning of the script, I can add an additional slot by first creating another variable command, this time entering in the G key as the variable. You don't really have to know anything about scripting, just copy and paste the appropriate if statement and substitute the new key assignment, in my case the G key. After that you'll see another slot appear in your inspector view. I can just drag another motion over there, in this case the thinking motion, and then go ahead and enter play mode again to test it. And that's all there is to it. It's not too hard to take characters from iClone into Unity to use in your very own project. And remember, all iClone embedded content is totally free to export once you purchase the pipeline version.